Hello, kind people and future LPTs. Welcome to another episode of our Let Review series. And in this episode, we are going to rationalize um, some chemistry questions. By the way, for those new to this channel, I am Teacher Reg. And I am a science major, and I'm here to help you on the basics and the foundations of science, um, most especially for the science majorship. All right. Okay, so without further ado, let me proceed to the next slide. Okay, let me remind you of this one. Now, so chemistry is fun. It's supposed to be fun. Okay, so learning chemistry is um is like revealing a new understanding of how our world works, right? So because anything is uh, made of matter, anything that has matter breaks down into chemical building blocks. So if if we don't have chemistry, then we wouldn't understand why leaves change um in the fall or at autumn, um. You know, how to preserve food, right? So it's fascinating for so many reasons. And it helps us also to understand the composition, um, the structure, what else? Um, properties, no, and changes of matter. So we can learn about um the universe no? in general. So yeah, it's it's fun and it's supposed to be fun. And chemistry is like cooking, just don't lick the spoon. <laughs> this is um sinabito sa amin ng chemist teacher namin dati. So yeah. <laughs> ah, it's like cooking. Oh, sino yung mga mahilig diyan magluto? So think of like chemistry as um the experimentation in chemistry, no? So it's like dealing with um the kitchen utensils. Oh, just don't lick the kitchen utensils because you're dealing with chemicals, not food. Anyway, for those new um to this channel, we, uh, we have playlist here. So you go to the channel itself, then makikita nyo my my playlist doon. So pwede nyo yung tingnan yung mga playlist na yan. And that day yung technique ko for me to be able to know if napanood ko na yung video na yan is um ilalike ko siya or magliliba ko ng comments and all. So ilalike ko siya. So para ma uh, remember ko na, okay, napanood ko na pala to. So, I would like the video, okay? So, for the English, uh, no, for English. Yeah, we're here, but we're talking general English, Filipino, social science. And for the science majors, you can have here, this one, the science specialization, as well as the science Q&A. So, pwede niya pong tingnan yan. No? So, pwede din siyang panoorin ng mga, kahit hindi science major, kasi um, meron namang, um general science no sa gen general education all right so let's start with question number 1 okay what um do the letters amu stand for amu absolute metric unit teka lang ililit ko lang to muna tong face ko ha <laughs> basang basa pa yung hair ko kasi um because umuulan kasi dito sa amin. Anyway, let's proceed. Um, letter B, uh, atomic mass unit. Or letter uh, letter C, actual makeup. Or D, an atomic metric unit. So, ano yung AMU? AMU. <laughs> ano yan? That's atomic mass unit, of course. Okay, that's equal to 1 12, the mass of a single atom of carbon-12, the most abundant isotope of carbon. Okay, carbon-12. Ano ba yung isotope? Yung isotope, then yun yung element na same sila ng number of protons, pero different number of neutrons. O, pag tinanong, ano yung um, disting distinction between um, regular lang na element and the isotope? Um, ang sagot natin ay different number of neutrons. Okay? Different number of neutrons. So, itong AMU, this is a unit for expressing masses of the atoms, of molecules, no, and subatomic particles. Okay? Now, um, recall lang natin. I know this is easy for most of you, no, the parts of the atom, pero dapat wag mong ibaliwala yung mga fundamentals, yung mga foundation, no, yung basics sa science. Kasi, um, 
mahihirapan kang i-break down yung mga complex na topics, yung mga complex concept kapag um, hindi mo pa na- naintindihan yung basic or yung mga foundation. So, we need to still, um, we need to familiarize this one. So, ito yung parts of the atom. First is we have the nucleus, of course. And the nucleus, may, nandyan ang protons and the neutrons. Pag sinabi natin protons, P, my letter P, that's positively charged. And neutrons naman, that's uh, neutral, no? no charge at all. And then, 99% of the mass of the atom is nandyan siya sa nucleus. And then, surrounding it, nasa mga different energy levels, different orbitals, um, is the electrons, which is negatively charged. Okay? So, that's the parts of the atom. Now, in a neutral element, yung number of protons is the same siya with the number of electrons. Now, tandaan natin yung number of protons that determines the atomic number of the element. Diba nga sa ating periodic table, we have, uh, currently, we have 118 elements no in the predictable yung numbers na, na yung atomic number niya that is referring to the um number of protons okay for example calcium calcium is number 20 in the predictable ibig sabihin calcium has 20 protons all right now 20 din yung electrons niya no kapag normal kapag neutral lang na element all right now don't forget this one no the history of the atoms um, the theories and the models kasi we don't have a direct evidence as to um what is really the face of or ano ba talaga yung appearance ng atom na yan. So, wala talaga tayong direct na evidence. Indirect lang yung evidences natin. So, kaya siya theory. No? So, we have um here, first is John Dalton. Pero, nauna pa rin yun si na Leosipo, si Democritus. But we'll start with John Dalton. No? That's 1800. Um, Dalton drew upon the ancient Greek ideas of atoms, um, atomos, no? from the word atom, comes from the Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng indivisible? Kapag sinasabi natin indivisible, ibig sabihin daw, hindi siya pwedeng ma-divide. Okay? Iba naman yung invisible. Invisible is hindi siya makikita. Diba? Pero ang indivisible, hindi na siya pwedeng ma-divide. Oh, question, Tan um, correct ba yan ngayon? Hindi ba pwede natin hindi ba natin pwedeng ma-divide yung atoms? Ah, di ba? Um, hindi no kasi meron na tayong concept of nuclear fission. Uh, tapos may fusion then. Oh, my my fission. Oh, fission is splitting of the nucleus of the atom. And that's the concept behind atomic bomb. Okay, so um pwede nating split no ang 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 nucleus ng atom. So, it's not true na indivisible yung atom. Kasi dati, they believe that the atoms are so small, it's the smallest unit of matter, like really the smallest unit, that um it comes to a point wherein hindi na natin siya pwedeng ma-divide, kaya indivisible, alright? Then, uh, tinatawag natin yung solid sphere model or the billiard ball model, no? Uh, it's just the same. It's John Dalton. Then, followed by J.J. Thomson. Now, J.J. Thomson discovered electrons. Uh, remember that ha? Joseph John Thomson. So, um tandaan niyo siya ang credited for the discovery of electrons, the negatively charged particles, subatomic particles. Yung uh, famous na atomic model niya is the plum pudding model. Uh, remember that ha? Plum pudding plum pudding model. He subsequently produced the plum pudding model of the atom and it shows the atom as composed of electrons scattered throughout a spherical cloud of positive charge. Oh, yan. So, para siyang mga raisins, no, yung mga electrons dyan, no, kung baga sa bread, yung bread ay, yan yung positive, tapos yung mga raisins na meron yan yung electrons. That's um, J.J. Thompson, plum pudding model, the electron discoverer. Followed by Ernest Rutherford. Oh, ito yung famous no, na model ni Rutherford, the nuclear model. So if you're going to search online on, on the structure of the atom, most likely, ganito yung, yung shape, no? same with Rutherford. Um, uh, ito yung commonly na nilalagay sa mga logo, no? yung um, model ni Rutherford. Nuclear model um, of Ernest Rutherford. Now, Rutherford is credited for the discovery of protons, all right? Positively charged particles. Kanina, yung electrons kay J.J. Thomson. Protons kay Rutherford, all right? Nuclear model of the atom. Uh, tingnan nyo. So, um, Rutherford fired positively charged alpha particles at a thin sheet of gold foil. Most 
passed through well, with little deflection but some deflected at large angles. This was only possible if the atom was mostly empty space. Or Remember this also. Siya din yung nagsabi na ang atom is mostly empty space lang siya kasi napakaliit ng nucleus. Think of an atom like a whole football stadium tapos yung marble, maglalagay ka ng marble sa gitna ng stadium, yun yung nucleus. Then the entire stadium is the is the atom. So, mostly empty space lang siya, no? So, grabe. Uh, uh, siya, you remember that, ha? Okay, rather for din yan. And uh, mostly empty space lang yung atom. Okay? So, dapat, uh, yan. This was only possible if the atom was mostly empty space with a positive charge, concentration, and the center. Oh, that's the nucleus. Then, there comes Niels Bohr. Oh, Niels Bohr, the Bohr. Planetary model. Uh, why is it called planetary model? Because yung, yung shape ng ng model ni Bohr is the same with almost the same with our solar system. There's the nucleus in the middle and then mayroong mga orbitals, no? Yung mga electrons na yan is like the planets and then the nucleus is like the sun. Okay, so it's planetary. Okay, so by the way, um yung nucleus pala, oh, so um Ernest Rutherford pa rin, no? So, nagsisim na dyan nagsimula kay Ernest Rutherford yung discovery of nucleus. So, Ernest Rutherford discovered nucleus, no? That meron siya sa core of every atom. That's the nucleus. So, Ernest Rutherford yan. And then, um, min uh, ginawa ni Bohr is he modified the uh, model of Rutherford. Uh, Bohr's mod Bohr modified Rutherford's model of the atom by stating that electrons moved around the nucleus in orbits of fixed sizes and energies. Electron energy in this model was quant um, quantized. So, uh, meron ng distinct na orbit, merong distinct energy level. Now, tandaan, kay Niels Bohr, the farther the electrons from the nucleus, the greater its energy. No? The greater the energy carried. So yung in this model, yung pinaka malaki na ener energy na na-carry ng electron is yung electron na nasa pinaka outer shell or tinatawag nating valence electrons. All right? Then let's proceed to the um quantum mechanical model of Erwin Schrödinger. Oh, yan. So, di ba yung famous na Schrödinger cat? So, yeah, he stated that electrons do not move in set paths around the nucleus but in waves. Yan. In waves daw, no? So, this is our modern, no? the recent one, na model of the atom. Quantum mechanical model. So, meron mga electron clouds. So, yung electrons is, instead of fixed yung position niya, is hindi na, hindi siya pwedeng ma-determine. Hindi siya, it is impossible to locate the location of the electrons and its velocity at the same time. Oh, diba? That's the Heisenberg um, uncertainty principle. So, that's for Erwin Schrodinger. Instead of mga orbitals, orbitals na yan, is, um, it is uh, surrounded by what he called the clouds of probability or the electron clouds. Okay? So, ito yung mga theories no, and models natin of the atom. So, don't forget this one because this is foundation, uh, lalong-lalo na sa chemistry. Chemistry is the study of matter and all. So, napakahalaga no, na um, alam natin to sa atoms. No? The, the smallest unit. Pero, hindi natin masasabi ngayon na it's really the smallest. Kasi yung atom, is, meron pa rin naman siya mga parts. No? Meron pa mga subatomic particles. Meron pa nga mga quarks, no? mga liptons and all. So, ang dami pa. Kaya, hindi na, hindi na siya smallest. <laughs> okay. Now, what's the difference between atomic mass and atomic weight? O, oh, magkaiba to sila ha, ang atomic mass and atomic weight. The mass, uh, it is the sum of protons and neutrons of a single atom. O, di ba sabi ko kanina, 99% of the mass of the atom is meron siya sa nucleus. So, basically, yung mass ng, ng, ma ng atom is concentrated lang, sa, lang siya sa nucleus. O, yan yung atomic mass. Neutrons plus protons. Alright? Now, the atomic weight naman, um, this is the average the average of the atomic mass of all natural isotopes of an element. Okay? No, so, di ba, for example, carbon, oh, meron carbon-12, carbon-14. So, marami siyang isotope, uh, isotopes, and then you have to 
get the general average, no, the mean of all the atomic masses, oh, yan yung magiging atomic weight. No? Kasali na yung mga natural isotopes niya. So, marami pang mga elements na maraming mga isotopes. No? Okay? So, yan yung kaibahan ng atomic mass and the atomic weight. Let's proceed to number two. O, diba? Number one pa lang. Ang dami ng ating concepts. Don't, don't forget those one, ha? Napakalaga nun. Number two, if an atom has 13 electrons, how many shells will have electrons? O, ito. So, this has something to do with the maximum number, no, the capacity of the shell, electron shells. O, ano sagot natin dito? Pag merong 13 electrons, how many shells will have electrons? Sige. So, this is, sagot natin ay 3. Uh, just remember this formula, ha? 2 um, times n squared. O yung n, that is referring to the number of um, electrons. Alright? So, yeah. Ah, no, no, not the electrons. The energy level, sorry. Number of energy level. Energy level. So, dyan natin madedetermine kung uh, ilan yung maximum na electrons. Like, okay, let's say for example, the energy level, or, or the same, that's the same with the principal quantum number. So, energy level 1, oh, use the formula. So, ilan yung electron capacity niya? So, 1 times 1 times 2, oh, that's 2. So, ibig sabihin, hanggang dalawang electrons lang ang kaya niyang i-carry. Then, um, energy level 2, principal quantum number 2. So, 2 times 2, that's 4 times 2, that's 8. Oh, so, electron shell 8, is uh, electron shell 2 is 8 yung electron capacity niya. Then 3, electron um, energy level 3 is uh, 3 times 3, that's 9 times 2, that's 18. Uh, okay? 4 naman, 4 times 4, that's 16 times 2, that's 32, right? Uh, so 32 electrons lang ang kaya niyang i-carry no, sa energy level 4. Energy level 5 or principal quantum number 5 5 times 5, that's 25 times 2, that's 50. Then we have 6. Oh, 6 times 6, 36 times 2, that's 72. Okay? So, ang, ang tanong natin is 13 electrons. Oh, look at the electron capacity. Saan ba yung mapapol ang 13? Oh, hindi din natin pwede sabihin number 8, no? Or may electron 8, no? Ang capacity. Kasi yung energy level 2, kasi 8 lang naman siya. Oh, so, ang sagot natin is 3. Kasi yung 3, kaya niyang i-carry ay 18 electrons. Oh, Napapol dyan ang 13 electrons, no? So, that's 3 electron um, or shell, electron shells, no? Ah, uh, no, uh, energy level, uh, shells, shells. So, 13 electrons uh, that falls under the energy level 3. Use this formula, memorize this uh, this formula, 2n squared. Number 3, ah, oh, meron pa pala, wait. <laughs> Here, this is also important. So, almost the same lang naman na concept uh, kanina. Remember this, ha? Each shell has one or more subshells. Uh, yung subshells natin, yun yung tinatawag natin, SPDF. SPDF. First shell has one, which is S. Second shell has two, which are S and P. And the third shell has three, which are SP and D. And the fourth one is um, SPDF. So, each subshell can have one or more orbitals. Oh, meron pa. Shell, tapos subshell, tapos orbitals. Now, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Remember this. Hence, maximum electrons for S is 2, P I um, 6, then D is 10, and F is 14. Now, in total, first shell can hold maximum of Two electrons, second shell can accommodate up to eight electrons, third shell can cater up to 18, and the fourth one uh, have a maximum of 32. Alright? So, yan yung um, about the orbitals no, and the electron capacity. So, napakalaga ng formula na yun, no, yung kanina. So, ito. Ito lang. Memorize this one. No? So, yung, again, yung N, that's the energy level, no, the principal quantum number. Okay, you or yung shell. Now we have quantum numbers, four quantum numbers. We have the principal, the angular, angular momentum, that's the same with the azimuthal 
no azimuthal quantum number then we have uh, magnetic and the spin now ito lang tandaan natin kapag principal that is referring to the distance of the electron from the nucleus oh, determines the energy no that's uh, how big the the radius of the atom is no yung distance niya from the electron uh, from the uh, of the electron from the nucleus no distance of the electron from the nucleus yun yung principal Ah, uh, yung values niya is 1 2 3 and so on. Azimuthal naman or angular, uh, it contributes to the shape of the orbital. Oh, uh, yan yung tandaan lang natin, yung shape of the orbital. Then the magnetic one is the orientation of the orbital and the spin, oh, uh, it's either positive one half or negative one half. That is uh, referring to the orientation of the electron spin. Oh, uh, just memorize this one. Principal Distance of electron from the nucleus, azimuthal, shape of the orbital, magnetic, orientation of the orbital, oh, dyan sa uh, X, either X, Y, and Z, no, yung orientation niya. And then the spin is the orientation of the electron spin. Alright? So those are the four quantum numbers. Okay, number three. Yan. You're cleaning the kitchen and suddenly stumble upon a spilled container. You spilled a powdery substance, no? Uh, ang... <laughs> Bakit ka nag-spill, spilled? Um, you spilled a powdery substance, NaHCO3. What could it be and how should you react? Uh, dito, ang tinitas dito is yung, um, kung alam mo ba, yung mga common chemicals in the household, no? meron tayong mga common household chemicals, and know the common name as well as its chemical formula. Sige. So, ano yung NaHCO3? Oh, no. Ano yan? That's... Um, sige, basahin mo na ang options. Ano kaya yan? <laughs> sige nga. So, that is merely baking soda. Oh, baking soda lang yan. Huwag kang mapanik. No, watch it. It's just baking soda. Alright? NaHCO3. That's baking soda. Next, your pet knocked over a bottle of CH3COOH at kit at the kitchen. What is the common name for that substance? Oh, yan. Ano yung CH3COOH? Na knocked over ng pet mo. Usually a cat. Uh, yung mga miming. <laughs> yung mga cats talaga yung um suspect dito. <laughs> okay, so this is vinegar no yung CH3COOH now remember yung vinegar natin ito yung components ng vinegar we have water and acetic acid now vinegar is usually mga around 4 to 7% lang yung acetic acid okay and it's mainly water um that's acetic acid CH3COOH okay vinegar now um let's proceed to the next slide ito yung mga common um, commonly used household items. Uh, Siyempre, water, alam natin, that's H2O. Yung bleach, oh, remember this, ha? Bleach is sodium hypochloride, uh, N-A-O-C-L. Oh, hypochloride, bleach. Di ba, gamit siya pang, pang linis, no? So, kasi may chlorine siya. Chlorine, di ba, yan yung ginagamit din natin sa mga swimming pools uh, to kill mga um, mga bacteria. Oh, ginagamit siya ang disinfectant. Salt, that's of course, table salt, sodium chloride, NaCl. Glucose, uh, glucose, blood sugar, C6H12O6. Uh, that's the product of photosynthesis, glucose. C6H12O6. Memorize this. No? Mga common lang naman ito na, na mga household items as well as its chemical formula. So kapag paulit-ulit nyo na itong binabasa, um, easily mariremember nyo na lang siya. Trust me. Okay, vinegar, oh, acetic acid. Aside from um, this one, si H3COOH, yung vinegar, acetic acid, um, yung chemical na, yung ayopak na, um, ay, yung name niya is acetic acid, right? So, yung chemical um, formula niya is C2H4O2. That's for the vinegar itself. Yung acetic acid lang, yung kanina, si H3COOH. Pero yung vinegar, oh, that's C2H4O2. Yan, okay? Rust, oh, that's iron oxide, Fe, no? 2O3, iron oxide, that's rust. So, yung rust, nangyari siya when there is an interaction of oxygen with the metal, with the iron metal, no? 
may oxidation reaction. Nail polish remover, well, that's acetone, C3H6O. Then the baking powder, or remember this, baking powder, sodium bicarbonate, baking powder. So sodium bicarbonate, that's NaHCO3. Uh -huh. Then the eggshells, that's calcium carbonate, CaCO3. That's calcium carbonate. No? That's mainly the um, ingredients or the, uh, that's the chemical composition for the mga shells, eggshells, yung, yung shells natin sa ocean, even pearls. No? Pearls is just calcium, cal calcium carbonate. Naphthalene balls. Yung mga moss balls, yung nilalagay natin sa mga mm, mga cabinets, no? sa mga damit. That's naphthalene, C10H8. So it's an organic um substance now naphthalene balls ano yung physical process na nangyayari sa kanya that's from solid directly to gas no without passing the liquid state anong tawag natin diyan that's sublimation correct na no? sublimation naphthalene balls C10H8 next number 5 okay pa ba tayo diyan sana okay lang kaya no dapat okay lang <laughs> Number five, for the discovery of which vaccines is Louis Pasteur known? Louis Pasteur. Oh, kaninong, anong vaccine ang um, nagawa ni Louis Pasteur? That's for anthrax and uh, rab rabies. No? Anthrax and rabies. French, French itong si Louis Pasteur. Chemist and microbiologist is known for the development of vaccines against anthrax and rabies. He also pioneered the study of molecular asymmetry, discovered the, that microorganisms cause fermentation and disease, originated the process of pasteurization, yung sa milk na, and saved the beer, wine, and silk industries in France. That's Lolo nyo, Louis Pasteur. Now, sino yung father of medicine? Sige nga, sino yung tinatawag nating father of medicine? Father of medicine, I see. Hippocrates. Uh, Hippocrates. Yung Hippocratic Oath, no? Father of medicine. Um, sino yung author ng book na The Republic? Uh, sige lang, review lang muna tayo ng mga commonly proponent ng um, kahit saan, kahit anong field, no? Sa science and philosophy. Sige nga, The Republic, that's Plato. Okay, Plato. Sino yung father of biology? Father of biology, si Aristotle. Okay? Founded Lyceum. Who is the founder of Lyceum? Si Aristotle pa rin yun. Next, first natural philosopher or commonly known as the first um scientist. No? Pwede na siyang gawing first scientist kasi um, siya yung nag-initiate na looking natingnan yung mga phenomena na in a scientific way, in a scientific perspective. So, that's Thales of Miletus. Okay? Thales of Miletus. First natural philosopher. Now, who founded Academy? Kanina, founded Lyceum, si Aristotle, yung Academy kay Plato yan. Okay? Next, who is the father of mathematics? Sino yung father of mathematics? Si... Sino yan? Archimedes. Oh, siya yung sumisigaw ng Eureka. Eureka, Eureka. It in, in English translation, that means Eureka. That means discovery. Alright? Next. Oh, sino yung credited for the invention of the periodic table? Yan yung, yung ginawa niya is yung, yun yung naging framework natin sa modern periodic table natin ngayon. Of course, that's Lolo. Dimitri Mendeleev. A Russian oh, si Dimitri Mendeleev. Then, he suggested that all matter was comprised of indivisible and in the indestructible atoms with distinct masses and properties. Yung um, uh, billiard ball model, uh, model or the solid sphere model, that's John Dalton. Alright? John Dalton. Sino yung electron discoverer? Electron discoverer. Sige nga, yung kanina, ang recall pa ba natin kung sino yung electron discoverer? C... Si Joseph Thomson, JJ Thomson, Joseph John Thomson. Um, how about protons? Uh, protons. Si Ernest Rutherford. How about neutrons? I think hindi ko na sabi kanina yun, yung neutrons. 
si um, Chadwick. Oh, Chadwick yan ha. Remember that ha? James, Sir James Chadwick. Oh, siya yung for the neutrons. Alright? Next, number six. Atomic number. Oh, I think sinabi ko na to kanina, no? Refers to the number of what in the atom? Oh, that is referring to the number of protons. Protons. Alright? Protons and neutrons is nasa gitna. No, that's the nucleus and the electrons na sa mga orbitals negatively charged. Next, what is the symbol for element tin? O, sa board exam, marami kang, meron ka talagang uh, makikitang question na ganito about the predictable, about its chemical symbol. No? So, you should familiarize the predictable. Now, need to memorize it all kasi 118 elements naman yun. Just familiarize lang kasi ma-remember mo din naman yan. Okay, this is um SN, no? Tin. This is a chemical symbol belonging a uh, chemical element belonging to the family group. Carbon family, no? Group 14. Of the 40 uh, 4A, 14 or 4A. So it is uh, its symbol is SN. Tin is widely used for plating steels, ca steel cans or yung sa mga cans natin. Food containers, metals used for bearings and in solder. No, that's tin. Okay? Next, number eight, who won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the discovery and development of gene editing? Ito. So, ito yung, ito yung um, napakahalaga no, ng, ng Nobel Prize na ito because it lead to um, the methods uh, in... Uh, yung ginawa nila is naging foundation siya for gene editing technologies. Uh, sino yon? That's... That's Sino to si James Watson, si Francis Crick, and Morris Wilkins? Familiar ba yung names nila? O, oh, kasi sila yung um, mga biologists who came up with the famous model of DNA double helix. Okay? Si James Watson, Francis Crick, and si Morris Wilkins. Pero, kilala nyo si Rosalind Franklin Oh, si Rosalind Franklin, he, uh, she also made a crucial contribution to the discovery of the double helix structure of the DNA. So, itong si Franklin, she um, had taken x-ray photographs no, of DNA. Then, um, pinakita niya kay Wilkins, at ito namang sa si Wilkins, um, he showed it to Watson and Crick. Oh, kaya sila yung nanalo ng Nobel Prize. And then, si Albert Einstein, of course. Uh, of course, hindi siya yung sagot. No? Albert Einstein, ano ba yung famous sa kanya? Uh, Siyempre, the theory of relativity, no? the special and the general theory of relativity as well as the photoelectric effect. Now, si Albert Einstein, hindi siya nanalo ng Nobel Prize for the um, theory of relativity. So, pero nanalo siya sa photoelectric effect. No? Then, Henry Becquerel, of course, for the discovery of radioactivity. And it leads to the um, works of Marie Curie and Perry Curie as well. And of course, hindi din po natin isagot si Martin Luther King Jr. Kasi um, he is known for his contribution to the American civil rights, right? So yung famo famous work niya na uh, I have a dream, no, yung speech niya. So ang sagot natin dito ay si Jennifer Dodna and Emmanuel Charpentier. Oh, yan. Uh, ito yung mga itsura nila, no? So um, bihira lang na ganito kasi konting-konti lang yung mga babae sa science and konti lang yung mga babae na nanalo ng Nobel Prize, right? But we have Marie Curie, of course, the lodi one, um, nanalo siya ng two Nobel Prizes, both in physics and in chemistry. So, tapos babae pa siya, no? So, woman empowerment. Yes, Jennifer Doudna along with Emmanuel Charpentier shared the 2020 Nobel Prize in chemistry for their discovery and development of gene editing technologies. Their discovery of the CRISPR-Cas9 in 2012 provided the foundation for gene editing, enabling researchers to make specific changes to DNA sequences in a way that was far more efficient and technology simpler than and technically simpler than earlier methods. So yung yun yung laging foundation no, for gene editing. Yung modern technology natin ngayon, um, yung foundation yan is from their works. No? Okay? Sige. Next, number nine. No, ito. Sa hormones ng fruit, ng plant. Which hormone in plants is um, responsible for fruit ripening? Fruit ripening. Is it the methane, acetylene, um, ethylene, or helium? 
parang hindi natin po nilisagot ang helium, no? It's gas. Helium gas is um number, ano siya sa per table? Number two, right? Uh, so, sagot natin dito is of course yung uh, ethylene. Gaseous plant hormone that ripens fruit. Uh, it's because of the ethylene. Now, let's have the plant hormones. Uh, so, you need to memorize this one, ha? I said there will be questions about this one. At meron din siya sa general education, science. Um, usually, tinatanong ang sagot is itong auxin and the cytokinin. Now, gibberellin, it stimulates breakdown of stored food to facilitate germination, sprouting of leaves. No, Yo, Kaya siya yung stem elongation, kaya tumataas yung halaman. No? It's because of the gibberellin. Auxin naman is the cell growth, cell elongation, uh, promoting the growth of the terminal buds, the fruit formation. Uh, that's The one responsible for that is the auxin. Cytokinin, still cell growth as well, as well as cell division or cell differentiation. Okay, Then we have the abscessic acid, uh, dormancy of the embryo, dropping of ripened leaves and fruits. O, yung, kaya during autumn or fall, bakit nahuhulog yung mga leaves o yung mga prutas? It's because of the abscessic acid. Then we have the ethylene, o yung kanina, ripening of leaves and fruits. Excess amount of ethylene causes dropping of leaves and fruits as well. So, same sila no, ng, ng abscessic acid. And then, ang abscessic acid as well, remember this ha, dormancy of embryo. O, kaya, um nagiging dormant yung mga embryo natin no so it's because of the abscessic acid this is during um certain seasons all right sige next number 10 what will happen to the pressure inside of a sealed tube if you raise the temperature oh this has something to do with the gas laws oh pressure and temperature relationship kaninong um law ito Ah, uh, syempre kapag tataas yung pressure, ano, uh, kapag tataas yung temperature, tataas din yung pressure. Uh, that's Gay-Lussac's law. Now, the pressure of a gas increases as its temperature increases. Now, remember, dapat constant yung mass and the volume. Okay? So, the temperature and the pressure ay directly proportional siya. Pag sinabi natin directly proportional, ibig sabihin, kapag tataas yung isa, uh, tataas din yung isang variable. Kapag bababa naman yung isang variable, uh, magdi-decrease din yung isang variable. No, That's directly proportional. Alright? So, there will be questions like this and you have to understand no, mga situation lang ibibigay. So, dapat alam mo yung, kung yung relationship ng mga variables natin. Ano ba yung variables na nire-refer ko? Variables, examples, um, yung temperature, the pressure, no, the volume, oh, that's the variables, no, the mass as well. So, this is Gay-Lussac's law. Now, you should familiarize all the gas laws starting from Avogadro's law. Equal volumes of gas contain the same number of molecules at the same temperature and pressure. Yan. So, itong formula na to, you have to write this one down. Okay? So, the number of uh, molecules, um, uh, it is uh, proportional to the volume. Alright? So, given na same yung temperature and yung pressure. Okay? Constant ha, constant ang pressure and the, the temperature. Sige, next. Boyle's Law. Oh, ano naman tong Boyle's Law? Siyempre, no? Um, yung Boyle's Law is yung relationship ng pressure at ng volume. Yan. Directly, um, ano, inversely proportional. Okay? Inversely proportional. Oh, ano naman yung ibig sabihin ng inversely proportional? Kapag tataas yung isa, ay yung isa naman ay bababa. Yung kapag magdi-decrease yung isa, oh, the other one also would increase. Oh, yan. The pressure of a gas increases as its volume decreases. Assuming constant yung mass and the temperature. Yan. So, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Memorize this kung pwede. Isulat nyo to sa mga walls nyo para hindi nyo malimutan yung mga formulas. Then, Charles Law, of course. Charles Law. It states that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. Ang temperature natin dito, yung unit natin is Kelvin. Alright? Kelvin. Assuming that the quantity of gas and pressure remain constant. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's Charles' law. Then the Gay-Lussac's law, yung kanina, uh, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Pressure and temperature relationship. 
Okay? Then we have the combined gas law. Oh, combined kasi combination na ng Boyle's law, Charles law, and the Galo Sachs. So, constant yung number of molecules, no? yung kay Avogadro. Then we have equation here for the combined gas laws. P1, uh, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. So, memorize the formula, no? It will come in handy. Okay? Next, we have the ideal gas law. Oh, the famous one, PV and RT. No? PV equals NRT. Yung P, oh, that's the pressure. Ano ba yung unit niya? Unit niya is ATM. Yung V is the volume in liters. And then the N, that's the amount um, in mole. Okay? Then the R, that's the ideal gas constant. Oh, yan. 0 0.0821. And unit niya is L ATM over mole K. K is the Kelvin no? temperature. Then the temperature is Kelvin, yeah. So here, memorize this, ha? PV and RT. And no, memorize also the R. No, that's the ideal gas constant. The value of R, 0 0.0821. 0 0.0821, no? 0.0821, yan. Okay? Number 11. Sige, proceed tayo number 11, ha? Sige, number 11. Which among the following is the softest metal? Diba, mga um, facts about the periodic table. Alin uh, ba dito yung pinaka-soft na metal? Metal ha, hindi mineral. Iba yung mineral. Sige, ang sagot natin dito ay cesium. Cesium, that's number 55 in the predictable. Uh, that's the softest metal. Yung talc, talc is, uh, ano yan? Talc is the softest mineral. ba In the most scale, talc is number 1. Ano yung number 10? Diamond. Okay? 10 is diamond. Talc is the softest mineral. That's number one. Pero ang tanong natin is softest metal. Okay. Hindi naman metal ang talc. O, diba? So, session ang sagot natin. Next, number 12. What is the name of an outbreak of fire without application of heat from an external source? External. Without ha, heat from external so source. Is it enthalpy, spontaneous combustion, spontaneous regeneration, or flashpoint? Ano ito? Okay, this is spontaneous combustion. combustion. O, ano ba yung mga requirements uh, para magkaroon ng combustion? Dapat may fuel, dapat may oxygen, uh, dapat may oxygen, and then may heat. Okay? So, unlike the rapid combustion, itong spontaneous combustion, it does not require any external energy to begin the combustion process. So, uh, meron lang siyang self-heating. No? It begins spontaneously at room temperature. So, yung mga combustible na, na stuff like yung hay, yung coal, uh, uh, here, in the next slide, uh, like this one. Oh, yan, di ba? So, suddenly, um, bigla-bigla na lang siyang nag-aapoy, no? Oh, meron kasi siyang self-heating. Oh, yung this um reaction begins when a material's internal oxidation causes a thermal process. So when the substance um reaches its ignition point temperature, no, at may enough oxygen in the environment, then magsisimula yung combustion combustion process. Okay, kaya the substance begins to burn spontaneously. Kaya tinatawag siyang spontaneous combustion. Okay, ito yung difference natin between spontaneous and the non-spontaneous reaction. O, yung bonfire is an example of spontaneous reaction since it gives off heat to the surroundings. Then melting of ice at 0 degrees Celsius is an example of non-spontaneous reaction since it requires heat from external source. Okay, so yan lang tandaan lang natin. No, kapag spontaneous um, combustion, hindi siya nangangailangan ng source, ng heat source from external na factor. Okay? So, no external heat is required to start it. Yan. Alright. Sige. Number 13. Uh, this is easy peasy for most of us. No no brainers. Ino yung credited for um, creation of the framework that became the modern predictable. Siyempre si Dimitri Mendeleev. O, oh, yan. So, gabi. Ito lang yung mga um, elements ni dati, no? So, that's Dimitri Mendeleev. Sino ba to si Rutherford? No, Paulit-ulit na to si Rutherford, no? Discovery of protons as well as the nucleus of the atom. Then, we have Schrodinger. Um, yung 
um, the quantum mechanical model, uh, di ba? the probabilistic uh, model of the atom, the cloud of probability of the electrons. Yan. Then, si Priestley naman, Joseph Priestley, siya yung credited natin for the discovery of um, oxygen. Uh, yeah, na oxygen. Now, question, ano yung tawag ni Priestley sa gas na oxygen? Ang tinanong na yan dati sa um, physical science. No? Kasi before, um, yung major natin is physical science and um, biological science. Pero ngayon, wala na siyang physical science and biological science. Isa na lang, general sciences na siya. No? So, general science na. Okay, so mas mala mas malaki, mas uh, nagiging wide yung yung scope natin na kailangan nating aralin, pero hindi na siya ganong kalalim. So we have to know a little of everything. Oh, si ano yung tawag ni Joseph Priestley sa oxygen? Deflogisticated gas. Ah, uh, yan no, deflogisticated gas. So marami siyang na-discover na mga gases no si Joseph um, Priestley. In which most famous yung oxygen no, that he produced through heating mercury oxide with a burning glass. Oh, because he was a firm believer of um, logiston uh, theory, he named the oxygen deflogisticated gas. Okay? So, number 14, what do you call a negatively charged ions? This one is quite sentimental. Uh, if napanood niyo yung mga previous videos ko, I'm, I've shared this already no itong question na to what do you call a negatively charged ions so pag, sa pagmamadali ko um yung nasagot ko is electrons no may electrons kasi sa option pero ions take note charged ions so hindi electrons ang sagot natin it should be an ion no an ion when it is negatively charged meaning more electrons than protons no negatively charged ion so that's an ion that ion is positively charged ion all right pag sinabi nating ion it's high it's um, charged particles no then neutrino ano naman tong neutrino are you familiar with this one neutrino it's like a little messenger from the sun oh, nanggagaling siya sa very core of the sun and it is traveling uh, it pass it is passing uh, through us no so hindi lang natin napapansin no but it's there it's neutrino then fission ano tong fission fission is the splitting of the nucleus no, of the atom so um that is the concept also behind the atomic bomb because when you split the nucleus of the atom it releases a tremendous amount of energy no napakalaki ng energy na yan so um kaya na um that's also behind the nuclear power plants no fission of atoms and fusion naman fusion is Oh, nag-fuse naman. Yung fusion is split. Yung fusion is, oh, ano, oh, na-fuse siya. Pero, and, uh, dito sa, sa Earth, is wala pa tayong technology that is advanced enough to have uh, this one, fusion of, of the nucleus. So, hindi pa siya nangyayari dito sa planet Earth. But, uh, saan siya makikita? Saan siya nangyayari? Sa ating uh, only star in the solar system, which is the sun. Oh, so that's fusion of hydrogen into helium. Oh, that's the fuel of our sun. Okay? So yeah, that's fusion. Number, oh, teka lang. Ito, ito pala, difference between an atom and an ion. Pag sinabi nating atom, meaning electrically neutral. So same lang yung number of protons and number of electrons. And the number of protons defines its element. Bakit? Kasi nga, yung atomic number, that's the number of protons. Now, each element in the periodic table is magkaiba sila ng number, no? magkaiba ng atomic number. Ibig sabihin, magkaiba ng number of protons. O, kaya distinct yun, unique yun sa element na yan. Kaya that's why number of protons defines the uh, element. Kapag sinabi natin ion naman, o electrically charged ang ion, different number yung protons and the electrons and it may contain one or more atoms. Okay? Tandaan nyo yan ha. Again, an ion is, um, an ion is um, negatively charged, no? I, uh, negatively charged ion. So, um, itong question na to, lumabas to during our time, March 2023, and 
Uh, very sayang lang kasi <laughs> alam ko yung sagot an ayon but sa pagmamadali ko electrons yung nasagot ko no so um i'm sharing this one because um na i'm i would like to you to value the import no you have to give importance you have to put value in each question kailangan bigyan niyo yung halaga lahat ng questions um 150 questions diba for the major shift So, dapat bigyan yung halaga. As well as sa general education and professional education, 150-150 each. So, huwag niyong isipin na, ay, isang question lang naman yun. Okay na yun. Hindi mo alam, baka yung question na yun, yan yung magpapapasa sa'yo or yan yung magpapabagsak sa'yo. So, dapat bigyan mo ng halaga lahat ng questions sa board exam. Alright? Sige. So, next, let's proceed to number 15. Which organic compound is commonly found in fermented milk products? Fermented milk products. Oh, anong acid yan? That's the, of course, lactic acid. You know, lactic acid. Lactic acid, um, it leads to softer, smoother skin by improving the skin's natural moisture factor as well as stimulating collagen renewal for firmness. Oh, diba? You, um, mga um conscious sa kanilang skin o umiinom ng mga col mga drinks na may collagen no ano ba tong formic acid naman saan siya makikita makikita siya sa mga ants o yan o bakit masakit kapag kinagat ka ng langgam <laughs> bakit may stinging sensation na ma feel it's because it's acid that's formic acid and we have citric acid naman o, sa mga citrus no mga citric food uh, fruits uh, yan and then we have um, carbonic acid no uh, sa uh, we have a lot of this uh, ating ocean all right sige next na here um facts about acids and bases hindi hindi to mawawala no ang acids and bases yung pH power of hydrogen acid pag sinabi nating acid less than 7 And it turns litmus paper red. Acid red. Acid red. Yeah, sounds like acid rain. Diba? Acid red. Kapag red yung color ng litmus paper, nagiging red siya. Ibig sabihin, acid yung solution natin. And mostly, it tastes sour, sting, or just feel wet. Include fruit juices, soda, coffee, yung mga um, soft drinks, yung mga acids. Yun. Then, bases naman, Apa, greater than 7 yung pH and it turns litmus paper blue. Oh, blue. It starts with letter B. Oh, I mean, isa siyang base. Bases blue. Acid red. And it ang base naman um taste bitter or soapy yung mga sabon or oh, it feels slippery. Yan, including baking soda, ammonia soap, um yung toothpaste, oh mga bases yan. Okay? Kaya nga tayo ng toothbrush kasi yung mouth natin ay acidic, mainly acidic kasi yung mga pagkain natin ay mga acidic. So, nagiging acidic yung mouth natin kaya tayo mag toothbrush, no? Using toothpaste. Ang toothpaste ay um a base, no? Kaya magkakaroon ng neutralization reaction. So, here um we have Arrhenius, Brunsted, Lowry and Lewis. Meron silang definition of Definitions of acids and bases. So, si Arrhenius, no, si Svante Arrhenius, sabi niya, yung acid ay yung substance na nagpo-produce ng hydrogen ions. no H plus, hydrogen ions. Ang base naman, it releases hydroxide ions naman. Hydroxide ions. no Kay Arrhenius yon. So, kapag tinanong sa inyo, um, sino yung nagsasabi na ang ang acid ay ang substance that releases hydrogen ions. Ang sagot natin ay si Arrhenius. Ang definition naman niya sa base ay substance that produces hydroxide ions, OH. Then we have brunsted lorry Mga dalawang tao to, no? brunsted lorry uh, Mabaga nag-collab sila. So, um, according to them, an acid is a proton donor. Okay? Proton donor. And a base is a proton acceptor or accepts proton. Oh, pwede siyang itanong sa board exam. What we call the substance that donates proton. Oh, ang sagot natin, syempre acid. No? That's according to Brunsted Lorry's definition. Then we have Lewis. Um, according to him, um, an acid is electron pair acceptor. O kung kanina, si Brunsted Lorry, they were focusing on the proton. Si Lewis naman ay sa electrons. No? As, um, an acid is a substance that accepts electron. Then, 
a base is electron pair donor. No, that's for Lewis. So memorize this ha, kang Arrhenius, Branson, Lardy, and Lewis. Usually sa science majorship lang naman to lumalabas, no? Kasi yung sa general education, sa general science, is usually it, yun lang yung about uh, this one, no? Acid and bases. P yung pH niya, yung litmus paper, ano yung properties, no? It tastes sour or bitter ba? Yan. And as well as examples. Okay? Now, number 16. Number 16. What is mercury commonly called? Oh, mercury. Mercury is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature. No? Pag sinabi natin room temperature, it is between around 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. So, that's the only metal ha, at liquid uh, at, that is liquid at normal temperature, no? at, at room temperature. So, mercury is also known as the quicksilver. Oh, yung sa Fantastic Four na movie, di ba? Oh, si quicksilver, mercury siya. No? At room temperature, yung Mercury is liquid. And then, um, ano naman yung only non-metal that is liquid at room temperature? Oh, non-metal ha. Yung metal is mercury. Ang non-metal that is liquid at room temperature is yung bromine. Okay? So, diatomic molecule yung bromine. Pag sinabi natin diatomic, di. Ilan ba yung di? Dalawa. No? So, dalawang molecule. Sound in nature is dalawa. Then, um, nitrous oxide, that's laughing gas. Yan, no? Laughing gas, that's nitrous oxide. Or the happy gas, that's colorless, non-flammable gas. And, uh, ano tong blue vitriol? Blue vitriol, this is copric sulfate. Um, it is bright blue in color. Kapag copper, no, that's, that's bright blue. And saltpeter, this is potassium nitrate. Uh, inorganic to na substance that is soluble siya in water. Potassium nitrate, no? salt better. So, ito lang uh, yung mga commonly um, uh, mga common name niya. Pero maybe hindi siya usually familiar for uh, some itong mga terms na to. But uh, you need to memorize this. Again, laughing gas, this is nitros, nitrous oxide. And Blue vitriol, this is copric sulfate. Copric sulfate, that's CuSO4. Saltpeter, this is potassium nitrate. Okay, next, number 17. Which of the following is used as an ingredient in alcoholic beverages? Oh, syempre, that's ethanol. Ay, teka lang. Syempre, that's ethanol. No? Alcoholic beverages, ethanol. Wala nang paligoy-ligoy pa, ethanol. So, yung alcoholic beverages, um, isa siyang fermented no, na liquor. Yung wine, yung beer. Oh. So, ethyl, alcohol, yung mer alcohol na meron sa mga alcoholic beverages. That's ethanol. And, um, here. Yung alcohol, yung mga fermented na um, substances. Ah, ah, pag sinabi natin fermentation, uh, it involves anaerobic no, transformation of fructose and glucose sugars into ethanol and carbon dioxide. No, anaerobic siya. Hindi siya require ng oxygen. So, we have fermented grapes. Oh, it forms wine. Yung beer naman for fermented cereal grains. From fermented cereal grains. Whiskey from fermented grain mush. Uh, we have vodka for fermented tubers and rum naman for fermented sugar cane. Uh, yan. So, um, alam na alam to no, ng mga, mga mahihilig talaga ng mga alcoholic beverages. Pero pag during sa exam, wag naman sanang, <laughs> at the night before, wag naman sanang uminom no, ng alcoholic beverages. Kasi baka sasakit niyang ulo mo in the morning. Okay? <laughs> Grabe naman yan. Okay, anyway, let's proceed to... Uh, number 18. What is the term for a substance that changes color in response to changes in the acidity or pH of a solution? Siyempre, yan yung tinatawag nating indicator. And we have um, natural and synthetic no, indicators. So here, so indicators are substances that change color when they are added to acidic or alkaline solution. Oh, alkaline solution that is referring to the basic solutions. 
litmus paper, um, pinaptalin, as well as metal orange. Uh, yan yung mga commonly used laboratory indicators na litmus paper, pinaptalin, and the metal orange. Okay? So, again, kapag red sa litmus paper, uh, that's acid. Kapag blue, that's base. Okay? Blue base. Letter B. Blue base. Acid red. Acid red. Sounds like acid rain. Diba? So, here, natural indicator yung litmus paper, ha? Uh, yan, alam nyo na yan. Now, itong funaptalin, this is synthetic one. Um, pag sa namin itong synthetic, ginagawa, ginawa siya sa laboratory. No? It's not natural. So, kapag acid, yes. colorless siya. Kapag um, alkali or a base, uh, it becomes pink. Now, the colored pink, it is much darker kapag mas grabe yung uh, base property or yung alkalinity ng ng isang substance no so um sa pH level sa pH scale natin we, it is ranging from 0 to 14 and um kapag above 7 diba base siya no now the number 14 siya yung pinaka basic no yung alkaline property niya is sobrang basic na ng, ng substance na yun yung yung bleach oh yun so kapag um pababa naman like for the acids, the, the lesser the number, the more acidic the substance is. Okay? Now, we have also the methyl orange. It is naturally orange. And it becomes red once it is in an acidic solution. And um, yellow naman kapag alkali or yung base na substance. Alright? Now, remember this. The point at which the indicator changes color is called the end point. O, lalong-lalo na nung sa acid-base titration natin. Uh, siguro naman, um, meron na tayo, di ba, meron tayong mga laboratory at school. So, um, I hope na pag experiment kamo, kayo ng, ng titration. No? The color change is due to the ionization of the acid base indicator. The unionized form has a different color than the ionized form. Okay? So, here, um, this is just a recall lang of acids and bases. Taste sour yung acid. It reacts with metal and give off hydrogen gas. Oh, ito. Remember this. Memorize this one. What they call the substance that reacts with metal and gives off hydrogen gas. Pwede siyang itanong talaga. And um, during our time, uh, meron lumabas about acid and base. Uh, all about the the one that um, releases hydrogen ions. Uh, that's that's an acid, no? And acid also conducts electricity in solution. Oh, gaya ng sa mga battery acid, napaka uh, acidic niyan ng, ng acid sa battery. Then the bases, oh, it tastes bitter. By the way, itong nasa picture, uh, is this coffee or tea? Yung coffee ay acidic siya, ha? as well as yung milk, acidic din, din yung milk. Pero slightly acidic lang siya. And it feels slippery yung base and it so dissolves fats and oils. Okay? Sige. Number 19, what do you call a blend of two chemical elements? A blend of two chemical elements. Nagtawag natin dyan. That's the compound. Uh, ito yung classification of matter natin. Alam natin that matter is anything that has mass and volume. Anything that occupies space and has mass. So, meron siyang dalawa. It is either pure substance or a mixture. Ang mixture, pwede natin siyang separate physically. Okay? Yan yung tandaan natin sa mixture, ha? Yan yung question about mixture. Uh, a substance na pwede natin separate physically. Ang sagot natin ay mixture. Pure substance, it has a constant composition. No? From the word itself, pure. No? Puro. Pure substance. It can either be an element or a compound. Kapag sinabi natin elements, oh, syempre yung nasa predictable natin ni elements, di ba? We have 118 elements in the predictable. That's, those are the substances made up of one type of atom. Kapag compounds, oh, substances made up of more than one type of atom. Oh, ba? Yung tanong natin is a blend of two chemical elements. A oh, blend of more than one element. Uh, one element. So, that's a compound. Then, again, uh, for the mixture, pwede siyang hetero or homo. Kapag sanamin ting hetero, uh, it is not in uniform. A physical combination that is not in uniform. Ang homo naman, from the word itself, homo, meaning isang face lang, uniform, you know, that's homo. Uh, here is a more comprehensive um, illustration. For the element, again, that's a substance that cannot be broken down into chemically simpler component. Yan yung element, ha? For example, um, yung element ng sodium, o kahit gaano mo pa siya, kahit on the atomic level, kahit i-breakdown o breakdown mo pa siya, 
um it will still be so uh, it will still be sodium in the atomic level compound naman that's a substance composed of two or more elements then ang um, homogeneous mixture is a composition of its constituents in uniformly mixed Uni eh, that is uniformly mixed throughout. And hetero is more than one yung phase na makikita mo. Okay? Two or more substances that are mixed. That is mixture. Alright? Sige. Uh, teka lang. Matter here. Uh, diba? Again, it, it has mass and it occupies space. It can either be solid, liquid. And what's the fourth state of matter? That's plasma. No, sa board exam, yung plasma, paulit-ulit siya. And dalawa ang pwedeng itanong about plasma. Plasma is uh, what is the fourth state of matter aside from solid liquid gas. Ang sagot natin, plasma. Examples of plasma, we have yung fire. Oh, di ba yung fire, hindi naman natin siya pwedeng i-classify na solid, liquid, or gas ba siya? Di ba? So, it is plasma. Yung lightning, that's also plasma. Electricity is also plasma. Um, what else? Yung auroras, no? plasma pa rin yun. And then, pwede din siyang itanong about the blood, or component of our bloods, of our blood. Um, what is the liquid part of the blood, or the liquid component of the blood? That's plasma. Plasma ang tawag natin doon. Alright? Sige. Number 20. Um, what is the principal alkaloid found in tobacco? Tobacco. Kaya bakit addictive yung tobacco? That's because meron siyang nicotine. Okay? That's nicotine. Nicotine, ha? Huh? Oh, that's in tobacco. It's an organic compound. Oh, kapag sinabi natin organic, ibig sabihin, um, usually, no, meron siyang, ah, syempre, meron siyang lagi siyang carbon. Carbon and that is bonded to hydrogen. Alright? Pero hindi lahat ng merong carbon bonded to hydrogen ay organic na siya. As long as it is made from, it is from the, um, from the living being, no? So, it's organic. Okay? Next. Number 21, what is the chemical name of baking soda? Oh, di ba yung kanina, commonly asked, commonly used household products. Baking soda, that's sodium bicarbonate. Okay, sodium bicarbonate. It is also known as baking soda or bicarbonate of soda. It's chemicals compound with, a, with the formula NH, NaHCO3 and the IOPAC designation sodium hydrogen carbonate. Yan, yun yung tawag natin, sodium hydrogen carbonate. That's the IOPAC name of um baking soda, no? sodium bicarbonate. Yung um sodium carbonate naman, uh, don't be confused with that one. Kapag sodium carbonate, that's washing soda. Okay? Washing soda naman yun. So, easily lang lang naman ma-memorize kasi sodium bicarbonate, it's by, by, it starts with letter B. Ibig sabihin, baking soda siya. Hindi siya washing, washing soda. Sodium bicarbonate, that's B, baking soda. Sodium bicarbonate. Sodium carbonate, that's washing soda. Alright? Sige, next. 22. Which of the below processes is used for the manufacture of ammonia? Ammonia. Ammonia. This is what we call the Haber process. From nitrogen, oh, here, nagiging... Um, Liquid ammonia siya. Kilala niyo si Fritz Haber. Di ba in our environment, the ammonia is part of the nitrogen cycle. Uh, di ba? You should know the biogeochemical cycles, ha? Uh, biogeochemical cycles. Huwag niyong kalimutan yun. And kasali na dun is the nitrogen cycle. So, um, it is, yung ammonia, it is produced from, it is produced in soil from bacterial processes. Yung ammonia is also produced naturally from decomposition of organic matter, no, including yung plants, yung animals. So, si Fritz Haber, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in uh, for his work in ammonia synthesis. No, so, um, yung process na yun, he developed, daw, uh, he developed that and that is now known as the Haber process. You, so, he fixes nitrogen from the air to make ammonia, which can be used as a fin synthetic fertilizer. Kasi during that time, tumaas yung, um, yung population. Sobrang nag-boom yung population. So, ang nangyari is meron ng crisis sa food. So, tumaas yung, um, yung, yung need, tumaas yung demand, tapos lumiit lang yung supply. So, ang nangyari, so, merong food shortage. So, itong si Haber, kaya siya na-award na ng Nobel Prize kasi 
he saved a lot of people. He saved millions of people, no? He saved the humanity. Kasi gumawa siya ng synthetic fertilizer, no? Yung ammonia. Tapos um merong meron nang fertilizer, so syempre nag-boom yung yung crops, no? Maraming yung crop yield is uh, lumago yung mga crops, maraming nakakain, maraming na save. So pero here's the downside. Ang ang nangyari, teka, I'm over go sa next. Oh, uh, 'di ba? Gumawa siya ng synthetic ammonia from the haber process was used for the production of nitric acid, a precursor of nitrates that is used in explosives. Yon. So, ginamit din yung works niya for um explosives and ang dami ring namatay. Kaya during that time, it was very controversial yung pag-accept niya ng Nobel Prize kasi hindi dumalo yung maraming tao, even his friends, uh, hindi dumalo kasi they think of him as a uh, sort of um a villain somehow <laughs> kasi kasi nga yung yung ginawa niya is um uh, here although he received the Nobel Prize in chemistry for the synthesis of ammonia Haber was controversial for his role in developing Germany's poison gas so, so ginamit din niya yung yung knowledge niya no for destruction ginamit na weapon for um the world war 1 so kaya naging controversial yung recognition sa kanya no yung pagbigay ng Nobel Prize sa kanya. Okay? So, he won a Nobel Prize in chemistry for this one, for the synthesis of ammonia, which later on, ginamit na uh, weapon. Okay, sige. 23. Which of the following observations is best explained by water's high surface tension? High surface tension, oh, wala nang iba. Yung kapag perang float-float, a leaf floats on the surface of a puddle. Yung ano pa, about surface tension, commonly asked to sa, sa general science and general education. um About the the toothpick, uh, yung, yung eh, some insects, they can walk on water. It's because of the sulfur surface tension. Na? Okay, so basta, pag lumilito siya, uh, that is surface tension. Which of the following best explains water's ability to dissolve certain substances such as glucose but remain separate from other substances such as oils? Mm -hmm. Is it A, due to hydrogen bonding, water is denser as a liquid than a solid? Mm -hmm. B, water has an overall negative charge which allows it to easily dissolve nonpolar substances like glucose. Non-polar ba ang glucose? Negative ba yung charge ng water? Letter C. Water molecules can form ionic bonds with polar molecules such as glucose. Ionic bonds ba yung form ng water? Uh, Siyempre, yung sagot natin is letter D. Water molecules are polar. Uh, polar ha, ang water molecules. Bakit siya naging polar? It consists of two partially positive hydrogen atoms. Diba water is H2O? Dalawang hydrogen, isang oxygen. And yung, yung hydrogen is partially positive and yung um, oxygen is partially um, negative. Alright? So here, why is water, why water is a polar molecule? Okay. Water is polar because oxygen and hydrogen have different electronegativity values. So, ito bent yung shape ng water molecule natin, ha? Uh, remember that bent yung shape. Oh, meron pa siyang degree. It's 104.5 degrees. Oxygen has two lone electron. Remember that. Merong dalawang lone electrons ang, ang oxygen. Dalawang lone electrons. So, puro sila electrons. Ibig sabihin, same sila ng charge. And same charges repel each other. ba? Opposites attract and same repels. And the electrons bonded to the hydrogen atoms. Yan. So the oxygen side has a partial negative charge and the hydrogen side has a partial positive side. Kaya siya nagiging polar. That's why water is a polar molecule. Right? Now, remember in chemistry, like dissolves like. Kaya, kaya yung water, um, it is also considered as a universal sol solvent kasi most of the molecules are polar and marami siyang pwedeng madissolve. No? So um, that's why polar dissolves polar. No? Like dissolves like. So, ma kaya ma-dissolve ang glucose. O, kaya yung kanina, pwede niyang i-dissolve yung glucose kasi glucose is a polar substance. Pero, hindi ionic bond. no Hindi ionic bond. Tapos, hindi din negative yung charge ng water. And, ah, so, water is denser as 
Ah, uh, no, no, no. Jut not the hydro not because of the hydrogen bonding. So the our answer here is really the water molecules are polar, and that one. Okay. Anyway, let's proceed to this. Ah, uh, by the way, um, ang it remember this one non-polar and the polar. Kapag sinabi ting non-polar, ibig sabihin equally yung distribution ng uh, electrons, no bonding electrons shared equal bit equally between the atoms. So it's uh, para siyang opposite no kasi non-polar tapos equal. Non-polar is equal, polar is unequal. O yan lang yung tandaan natin. Polar is unequal sharing of electrons tapos polar is equal sharing of electrons. Yon. Okay? So ionic this is between a metal and non-metal, positively charged, positively charged and negatively charged. So complete transfer. Kapag ionic, complete transfer. No, transfer of electrons. Kapag covalent lang, that's sharing of electrons. Okay, 25. Bodies of water such as ponds freeze from top to bottom, forming a floating sheet of ice. This can help aquatic organisms survive during cold winter months. Tinatawag natin yung hibernation, no? yung, yung um, um, mechanism nila to survive during cold winter months. I don't know, not, not the aquatic plants. Yung mga, not, not, yung mga uh, like polar bears. Oh, yan, hibernation yun ha. So, tinatanong din yan. And then, yung sa, during the sa summer, that's estivation. Now, ba back to the question. Um, bodies of water, again, such as ponds, freeze from top to bottom. So, nagpo-form ng floating sheet of ice. So, nagpo-freeze yung mga ponds natin from the surface of, from its surface to the bottom. Which of the following statements explains why ice floats on the surface of the pond? So this has something to do with density. What's density? Diba? The formula for density is mass over volume. The crystalline structure of solid ice makes it less dense than liquid water. Or B, as water freezes, ionic bonds form between water, mole water molecules preventing the ice from sinking below the surface. Or letter C, the increased number of hydrogen bonds in an ice compared to liquid water causes the water molecules in ice to be closer together. Our letter D, the ice molecules have higher kinetic energy than the liquid water molecules causing them to float. Okay? So, ano ba yung mas dense? Yung ice, solid ice, or the liquid water? Siyempre, yung solid ice. It's because yung solid ice, and, di ba yung water molecules is, um, is so meron siya mga spaces in between. Tapos, pag nagiging solid siya, it would form a crystal lattice. So, magiging fixed yung shape niya. Magiging fixed yung um, magiging fixed yung spaces in between. Kaya, um, it turns out na mas magiging, mas maraming spaces na mer magkakaroon sa kanya. Compare doon sa liquid lang siya na pwedeng magkadikit yung mga water molecules and all. So, wala siyang fixed na, na, na shape. Pero kapag nagiging solid siya, magiging fixed yung mga water molecules. Yung spaces between the water water molecules. So, kaya nagiging less dense siya compared to water. So, the crystalline structure of the solid ice makes it less dense than the liquid water. Uh, yan. Yan yung rason kung bakit nagpo-float yung isang object sa another um, solution, like in water. ba? A substance floats if it is less dense than the components of particular mixture. Ice is approximately 9% less dense than liquid water. So, the same idea with um, as to why the oil floats on top of water. It's because of density. Now, oil is less dense than water. And at the same time, um, oil, oil also is hydrophobic. So, aside from the density difference, hydrophobic din yung oil. So, takot siya sa water. No, it is lipid. The same with clouds. Oh, have you ever wondered why is it yung mga clouds natin, it's just floating at the top. Oh, nandyan lang yung mga clouds na dyan. It's because of density difference. The density below the cloud is uh, higher compared to the clouds. Kahit massive yung, yung clouds natin, sobrang bigat niyan. It weighs a ton. Pero, less yung density niya. Maraming spaces in between. No? So, it floats um, because it is less dense compared to the atmospheric air. Alright? Sige. Next, 26. Which of the following describes the most likely way in which two water molecules will interact? I was about water na to. Grabe nun tong sikaras. Marami talagang tanong about water. Okay. A covalent bond will form between the hydrogen of one water molecule and the oxygen of the other water, mo uh, other water molecule. Or letter B, the hydrogen bond will form between the hydrogen atoms of one water molecule and the oxygen atom of other water molecule. Now, um, I am reading this um, in a fast pace, pero pagdating sa board exam, 
kailangan yung intindihin bawat options, no? Kailangan yung tingnan yung choices, hindi yung glance-glance ka lang. Pero, you have to take note also of the time kasi may, may oras naman tayong tinitingnan. Pero, mind you, um, kayang-kaya yan, no? So, uh, as for my case lang, uh, would you like, I would just like to share this one. Natapos ko yung major within um, one and a half hour, no? So, supposedly, it should be three hours. Pero, pagkatapos kong sagutin yung one to 150, um, binalikan ko ulit lahat. Like, binasa ko ulit lahat from number one to 150. And ma'am, marami ka bang binago na sagot? Yes, marami ako binago na sagot. And and that's I think that would be the reason why is it naging 95 yung rating ko for the major ship no sa science kasi marami akong binago. Just make sure lang na um sure ka sa binago mo na sagot. O, kapag meron kang babaguhin, kailangan sure ka sa um sagot na ipapalit mo. All right? And you have to um erase it neatly. So pumit ka ng eraser na Faber Castell yung sa from the National Bookstore yung for board exam talaga meron talagang um eraser niyan. So, wag mong gamitin yung eraser na nasa pencil ha kasi um ang pangit ng pag-erase kapag yun yung gagamitin mo. Okay? By the way, ang sagot natin dito ay um letter B, no water molecules. Yung hydrogen bond will form between the hydrogen atom of one motor, water molecule and the oxygen of atom of other water molecule. Ayun yung sagot natin. Hydrogen bond. Okay? So again, next. Uh, what, uh, what's the difference between cohesion and adhesion? Yan. Cohesion and adhesion. Pag sinabi natin adhesion, um, ito yung water is attracted to other substances. Kapag cohesion, uh, water is attracted to water itself. Yan. What's, that's the main difference. Okay? Cohesion, same substance. Adhesion, different um substance next um here um another example um tape sticks to paper because of addition oh, paper tapos may tape magkaibang substances yan different molecules attract each other cohesion naman like molecules attract each other uh, example in mercury nakikita na ba kayo ng mercury so sana wag yung paglaruan yung mga ganyan <laughs> kasi dati nakikita kami uh, mercury sa um sa laboratory tapos Ang uh, ginawa ng mga kaklase ko is sila separate-separate nila kasi napaka-aliw tingnan. <laughs> Pero it's it's dangerous, lalo-lalo na kapag may mga su sugat ka sa yung kamay. And it would seep in and it would it is toxic no for our body. So, dapat um, mag-gloves ka if you're handling with uh, mercury. Alright? Sige, 27. We're almost done. We are only, we only have 30 items Okay, so 27, which of the following is biological activities best demonstrates water's adhesive properties? Adhesive. Ano nga yung adhesion? Different, no? Different water molecules. Is it A, the vacuole of a plant cell swells as water enters and dilutes its content? Letter B, water evaporates from leaves through openings called stomata which open and close in response to environmental conditions or letter c water travels through vascular tissue ano ba tong vascular tissue na refer dito the xylem and the the flow, phloem no water travels through vascular tissue from the roots to the leaves of a plant moving against the force of gravity or letter d a leaf's cuticle or waxy outer coating repels water droplets. Ang sagot natin dito ay yung letter C. Okay? Yung um, movement ng water in plants vascular system that relies to the adhesion of water to the walls of the xylem. Kasi for plants, adhesion allows for the water to stick to the organic tissues of the plants. No? So, that's um adhesion. So it relies on the adhesion of water to the walls of the xylem. Xylem and the phloem, those are the vascular tissues of the plants. Kapag sanabi natin xylem, ano yung tinatransport niya? It transports water. Kapag phloem naman, it conducts or it transports food. Food in the form of glucose. Alright, number 28. Teka, pa, lagyan ko lang tong face ko dito. Tada! 28. Which statement best describes why water is an effective solvent? Oh, some, 
Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, water is considered as the universal solvent pero hindi lahat ng kaya niyang i-dissolve, no? Pero um it dissolves uh it dissolves substances uh, greater compared to other substances. Kaya siya tinatawag na universal solvent. It's because of its polarity. Oh, yan. Water's polarity allows it to dissolve ionic and polar compounds. Oh, di ba yung about water's polarity? Sanabi ko na yun kanina. So, that's because of water's polarity. 29. Yay! 29. What is the chemical element for the symbol TB? TB. Usually, tinatanong talaga sa board exam sa general science is yung calcium, yung TE. Oh, later on, uh, titingnan natin kung ano ba yung mga chemicals na yan. TB is, of course, terbium. Siyempre, no? Terbium. Terbium. Next, um, calcium. Yan. Ito, ito yung uh, meron pa ulit-ulit to sa general science, sa gen ed science, general education. Calcium is, of course, CA. Uh, tellurium is TE. Tellurium. Tellurium. Mercury. Mercury is HG. It is the only liquid metal at room temperature. Sodium. Sodium is Na. Correct. Iron. Oh, from ferrum, ferric, Fe. Iron. Tungsten. Oh, ano naman tong tungsten? Namang layo lang. Tungsten is W. Okay? Tungsten is W. Polonium. Polonium is PO. Oh, ito yung discovery ni Marie Curie na. Lithium is Li. Ito yung present sa Uh, mga batteries, di ba? Lithium, it's present in batteries. Then, phosphorus is P. Uh, ito yung first ever discovered element. Yan, phosphorus ha. First ever discovered element. Tin is SN. Gold is of course AU. And silver is AG. Okay? So, sige. Next, number 30, the last one. Number 30. Which element got its name from the water it makes when burned? Di ba? Yung sa combustion is we, we need um, the gas, like for example, hydrocarbon, a methane, plus oxygen. Uh, tapos yung product niya ay water and carbon dioxide. So which element got its name from water? Yan yung hydrogen. Well, the name derives from Greek hydro for water and genes for forming. Because it burned in it burned in air to form water. Hydrogen was discovered by the English physicist Henry Cavendish. Cavendish. No? Hydrogen. That's number one in the periodic table. That's the lightest element. Hydrogen. And it's the most abundant element in the universe. All right, hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. And uh, yun yung ginagamit din na fuel, the hydrogen gas for our space rockets, no? mga spaceships natin, mga hydrogen, hydrogen gas yun. Question, what's the most abundant element in, or most abundant gas in the atmosphere? That's nitrogen. How about in the human body? What's the most abundant element in the human body? That's oxygen, okay? Oxygen. Okay, we're done. Yeah, hey. By the way, take a lang. Um, I ibabalik ko lang muna. Um, tungsten. This is what? This is W. Iodine is what's its symbol? Is I and sodium, as of course, is um Na. Okay. Sige. So here's my um last tip, no, for this video. Read high school books. Lalong lalo na for science majors. And also also naman if uh, merong hindi science major na nanood ngayon, um you can do this also for your majorship. So magbasa kayo ng mga aklat. Lalong lalo na sa social science, marami sa elementary books din, no, as well as high school books. So magbasa ka ng mga high school books kasi sa high school siya yung yun yung formative years natin no for for the learnings in lalong lalo na sa mga foundations sa science o yung mga scientific principles magbasa ka ng high school books yung mga books ng mga kapatid mo kung meron kang kapatid sa high school or mga may kakilala ka sa high school so yung mga sa mga modules nila yun binasa ko yun <laughs> and then love what you are doing as for me kaya siguro nasasabi ko na malaki yung rating ko for the majorship natin for the science major kasi I love science 
I really love science. No, I I'm, I love learning scientific principles. Mas um mas naging happy ako na naiintindihan ko. Ay bakit ganyan? Bakit bakit ah uh, nangyayari yan? Oh, what is the reason for that? What's the scientific principle behind that? Oh, nagiging masaya ako. <laughs> I'm not a nerd pero <laughs> nagiging happy talaga ako kapag um nakakaintindi ako ng mga uh, phenomena phenomena uh, na nangyayari sa mundo, no, sa universe. So, I guess that's why um, I love reading science books as well. Even now, I read a lot of uh, mga, yung mga science encyclopedia. Maganda kasi siya kasi meron siya mga, mga pictures, no, may, may visual um, representation, meron kang nakikita. And then, stay curious. Oh, yan, that's one of um, a good attitude of a science enthusiast, no? A person who loves science, we should stay curious. No? Okay? So, God bless everyone. Thank you for watching this video and see you on the next episode. I'll be praying for everyone's success. So, malapit na ang board exam. So, no time for <laughs> procrastination. So, it's time to study na. So, yeah, it's um that would be all for now and bye-bye.